Welcome to Grace Bible Fellowship. To all of our online friends, join us as we worship Jesus Christ together. Invite your friends. Welcome to Grace Bible Fellowship. To all of our online friends, join us as we worship Jesus Christ together. Invite your friends.
Welcome to Grace Bible Fellowship. To all of our online friends, join us as we worship Jesus Christ together. Invite your friends. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it's It's good to welcome those who haven't been here before. And the young man in the back back there by the name of Prince. Y'all welcome Prince. Prince, we're glad you're here. Amen. <laughs> and, and, and we're glad that Sean's mother's here for the first time too. God bless her. We're glad you're here, man. And the Lord willing, we'll have baptism at the close of the service today instead of the first of the service. So we'll see how that works and make it work fine. And I'm really thrilled the Lord willing, we get to baptize Sean and Faye. Wow. You that are old enough remember when Faye was like this up here singing with me. She's been a great singer, and it's thrilling to have this opportunity to baptize her. It's thrilling to see all of you today. May God bless you and encourage you and strengthen you. So I'll we'll ask you to stand as we sing this first song. I'm thrilled with what God is doing and I praise his name forever. Sing with us, all right? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures. with me. Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be, be done in earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. How about hallelujah? Hallelujah. Amen. Sing this song with me, all right? Come, now's the time to worship. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasures remain for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time. to worship come just as you are before your God come willing we choose to surrender our lives willing our knees to bow with all our Heart, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you now. Hallelujah. I love that. Amen. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you 
come just as we are to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know all about us, Lord, but you accept us like we are that you may help us to be all that you've designed and purpose in our lives. We give you praise and honor and glory for that, Lord Jesus. And we ask of you to bless this crowd in a very abundant way today, Lord, with your wonderful presence. When we leave today, may we have the sense of the presence of God in this place and in our hearts and our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Keep standing as we sing the next song. I like this one very well. We have come into your house. We have come into your house and gathered in your name to worship you. We have come into your house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered this one. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship Christ our Lord. Christ our Lord. Oh, let us, can you lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship him? Thank you. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his and worship Christ our Lord. Oh, let's worship Him, Jesus Christ our Lord. For He is all our righteousness. I stand completed Him and worship Him. Yes, bless the Lord. He is all my righteousness. I stand completed him and worship him. He is all my righteousness. I stand completed him and worship Christ my Lord. I worship him. Jesus Christ our Lord. So forget about yourself. So forget about yourself. And concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship Christ our Lord. I Christ our Lord. We're standing on holy ground, so y'all keep standing, okay? We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels, hallelujah, around. Thank you. 
I want you to think about His holiness today. I'm going to try to preach it along that way. But this song right here is one of the songs that helps you and me think about how wonderful of our God is. To God be the glory, great things He had done. So loved He the world that He gave us His Son. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Let the earth hear His voice. So praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, to Jesus the Son, and give Him all the glory. Great things He has done. The purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest defender who truly believes that no man from Jesus a heart and receive. So praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth Hallelujah. Oh, lift him. Praise the Lord. Let all the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he had done. Great things he had taught. The sun, but higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the Oh, oh, come to the Father, through Jesus Hallelujah. the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Great is your faithfulness before you sit down, all right? Great is thy faithfulness. There we go. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, our Father. I like this. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion. They Hallelujah. 
bless his name. Great he is. Yes, bless his name. Great he is. Thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Let me just pray again. Father, thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Yes. Thank you for your kindness. Yes, Lord. Thank you for drawing us to yourself. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you for revealing yourself to us that we may behold the glories of the eternal God. Hallowed be your name. And Lord, this morning we just come with our hearts wide open for you to touch us. Help all of us to catch a fresh glimpse of the glory of the God of all eternity. You love us, Lord, and we thank you for it. And we ask of you to touch all of our hearts and bless in the furtherance of this service for your name's sake, and to you be all praise and honor and glory. Amen. And again, you said amen. All right, you may be seated if you like. Holy, 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 uh, let's see. Glorify thy name in the, all the earth is okay, all right? Father, we love you, we worship and adore you, glorify thy name in all the earth, glorify thy name, glorify thy name, glorify thy name. story before but let me say it again back about 30 years ago 
Promise Keepers had really started going and was doing wonderful, doing stadium events. And at some of them, in fact, I was at, at the largest one that, that was 63,000 men were in the Detroit Stadium, whichever one that was back in those years. And we'd gone through what, whatever it was, a day and a half, and we were at the close. And uh, we'd get in and drive back home. But they started singing this next song, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And Mike, I'll never forget, God came into that place with such power and presence until they couldn't quit singing. They just kept singing. I, I looked around and, man, big guys all over tears just streaming down their faces and hands in the air. I want to tell you, if you ever get a glimpse of Jesus yes, amen. like he is, you'll never get over it. And I tell you, God came. I had got my son David to go with us. He had been filled up with so much stuff in UPS when he was up in management already by then and got him to go with us. And he said, Daddy, I'll never forget what happened as God came and touched our hearts together. God loves to touch us. Amen. He loves to help us to be conscious of his presence. And that's what we long for here, Grace. Oh, that you may know the presence of God. Amen. As you read in the bulletin, maybe already, I said, <laughs> maybe already, I said that what I really long for, maybe you already know it, maybe you don't. I long for God's presence to be so rich for every one of you as you leave to go back home to face another week. You know God's been here Amen. to meet with you and touch your heart. Thank the Lord. I'm glad we have this opportunity yes. to come. So sing it. You can't sit down on this song. You'll have to stand up again if you can, all right? Holy, 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 Lord God. Oh. 
said amen and praise the Lord amen. and hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank y'all. You may be seated. Thanks, ladies. Thank y'all. Amen. Good singing with us today. <coughs> Mike, I need to go around behind there and turn that valve off below the for me. <coughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Well, Don was going to bring in a special number of songs for us today. It is no secret what God can do when that what he was planning on doing, Marcia. Well, let, let's sing it together. Can you get it up there for us, Evan? It is no secret what God can do. Out of town. Can you sing from down there? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Wherever you are, fellas, get your mic on again. All right. It is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll part. you'll get the offering place we'll receive the offerings thank you all for your faithless and tithes and offerings and you know we've been praying for God to send us food for the Thanksgiving baskets this week Woody said we'll have at least two of them over there yeah, down below and you just shut it off yeah, right down below there you'll find it down on your knees and you'll find it <clears throat> amen let's, let's sing amazing grace lady mother Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I found was lost. Was his grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fear relieved? How precious did that grace appear? I tell you what I miss. I miss singing with some children. And we didn't get them here this eat Betty this time, did we? Well, we'll keep working at it. We've missed those little tykes and miss all those that are. Y'all help me get some more kids in here. Amen. Let's see. Some of you younger folks get married and have babies, okay, y'all? <laughs> Amen. I'm sure glad my mama didn't abort me, and I'm glad she didn't abort, yours didn't abort you. And I'm glad we have a great time with children and kids. Y'all keep praying with me and pulling with us. God, you're able to break through with us in ways we never dreamed was possible. Amen and amen. What's that? 
Uh, <laughs> you want to come sing with me, Faye? All right, you know, I won't make you. All right, all right. Well, I tell you, we love that Faye. I, I tell you what, let's do. Let's overrule Larry, and we're going to do appreciation, appreciation for our dear Mike and Laura. They, they just seem, let's do appreciation for them, okay? So guys, come get some offering plates, and let's do appreciation for Mike and Laura. Let's see, we got offering plates someplace up here. There you go, start it back, come forward again, okay? Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to let my wife play a little bit. I need to do something right quick with a baptistry. Maybe it, what, it, it is on. I need some batteries, I guess, pal. Amen. <clears throat> With all of this stuff that we have, we still can't keep it all going right, but we're still making it. Jennifer, I'm going to ask you for special help at the close of the service if you'll be out there to help Faye out of the baptistry down, okay? And she'll make it all right. She'll do all right probably, but it just t helps to have children. Helps us all. Amen. Well, God's blessings on you. I'm going to try to do something a little different today. I, uh, I don't know. I don't, don't often preach with a pulpit. Now, Mike does all the time, and I'm glad he does. But uh, I, I'm going to read to you today something that I don't often do. But I found some stuff that I think will inspire you and stir your heart in a very special way. And I've been trying my best. I wish I could memorize all of it. I wish I had that ability. <laughs> but I, I don't always get that done. But I'm glad that to uh, have the opportunity. So I'm going to speak, first of all, from Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, beginning at chapter 6. You're still running hot, Mike. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We might need to make sure we check so we don't run over up here again like we did last week. Thank you all for putting up with us all of our ways. <clears throat> when, we, when we first started, I mentioned last Sunday, there wasn't enough money to do all the kind of things that would like to be done, so it works real good. So we just shift gears and we keep doing, and the Lord's always helped us through, and I praise him for that across all these years. <clears throat> Amen. Isaiah chapter 6. Did you find some batteries for me? Is it, you think it's loud enough for you? Good enough, okay. It is down. All right. In Isaiah chapter 6, I'll be speaking from the second verse, especially these words out of the second verse. I saw the Lord. It was in the year that King Isaiah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphims, each having six wings, and with two wings they covered their face, with two wings they flew, and with two wings they covered their feet, and with two wings they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You think you could repeat that with me? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Think you can say that with me? Let's say it together, all right? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Let's do it again. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And like the seraphims, let's do it again. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Interesting little side note to you. This is the one and only time in the Bible the name for angels is seraphim. It's the only time that it's ever used. So there were those seraphims, and they had six wings. With two, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the... Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations and the entire building was filled with smoke. And then Isaiah said, it's all over. I'm doomed. For I'm a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I live among a people with fil filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of the holy heavenly armies. And then one of the seraphims flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. And he touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is gone. <laughs> your guilt is removed. And your sins are forgiven. And then I heard the Lord asking, Whom shall I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? And what did Isaiah say? Here am I. Send me. I'll tell you, dear friends, if you ever get a glimpse of Jesus, You'll be willing to do anything and everything he'd love for you to do. And you will count it a wonderful, wonderful privilege to think that God would let us be his messengers on this road of life. Isn't that beautiful? God touching our hearts, using every one of us for his glory and his honor. For God has called every one of us to fulfill that place in life that brings glory to his name <clears throat> and does something to touch us and change us so completely that we're thrilled what God's doing in our lives. Now, if you'll turn with me into the Revelation, 
chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Beginning at verse 8, each of these living beings, and again it's talking about the seraphims, had six wings, and their wings were covered all over the, with eyes inside and out. And day after day and night after night, they kept saying, can you say it with me? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The one who was and who is and who is still to come. Whenever the living be beings give glory and honor to God, thanks to the one sitting on the throne, the ones who live forever and forever. And they cry, say it with me, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. In Proverbs chapter 19, beginning at verse 1, this is a psalm of David that was directed to his choir. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies display his craftiness, his craftsmanship. And day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make, make him known. They speak without a sound or a word. And their voice is never here. I never heard. What's he talking about? Well, we don't hear the stars sing. Now, they tell us that somehow electrically they picked up some noise from outer space. But the Bible tells us that the morning stars sing together. We don't hear that, but we see the beauty of God. The other morning, it was my privilege to be up real early. I was scouting out to get his food. And uh, as I came down around the corner, and the beautiful morning star was Venus. And it seemed like it was just extra bright. And I was thrilled at it and told the Lord how thrilled I was to be able to see it that morning, his heavens, his glory. I stepped out of my truck and got over into the box truck. And as I did, I looked up. And for the first time in weeks, I saw stars everywhere in our heaven. God speaking to you and me by his beautiful creation. Just think with me, y'all. Not only did he create all of those, but he knows all of them by name. <laughs> he knows what all's going on. He transcends everything you and I can ever think of. But he tried to do something to help you and me know that he's the God of all eternity that is so interested in you and me that he's displaying his beauty and his glory in the heavens above. Now, in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse, beginning at verse number 15. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, and I could add, and your love for his presence, I have not stopped thinking, thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you will understand the confident hope He's given to those he's called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. Can, can, you, can you think that? Wow. Think how God thinks about you when you follow him. He, he calls you a rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is that same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. And we sang it this morning, the elders and angels bow 
And if you read in through the Revelation, you'll find the places where those four and twenty elders that surround the throne fall on their faces before him and the angels begin to praise him. I, I, I want to be there. I want to hear what they've got to say, don't you? But the Bible says, or the songwriter said, maybe it's in the Bible too, said, when the saints of God begin to praise the Lord, said the angels will fold their wings. Because we have known the glorious beauty of his redemption, of his saving grace, of his blood being spilt on Calvary for you and me, that we might enjoy salvation and enjoy his presence. Amen. I wish all of you could have been here last Sunday night and heard the, the, the assemblyman sing, but especially what I'd like to have heard Dave Nelson's last comment in the songs. He said, I want to tell you all, there's something about this church that God is here. He said, if you ever lose that, you've lost everything. But it's God's presence that makes the difference. And I mentioned to Laura as we were standing there together at the closed door, that is what makes the difference. It's God coming to church and touching our hearts. But dear friends, I can't make you be touched by God. I, I, I do my best. I, I, I wish I was real eloquent. <laughs> I was thinking this morning or, and last night, uh, Charles Spurgeon, one of the greatest preachers that's probably ever lived since John Wesley and uh, Apostle Paul, he, he's got more written words than any other preacher in history. Spurgeon could say the word Mesopotamia, did I even pronounce it right? Mesopotamia, did I say it right? He could, he could pronounce it three different ways and get three different emotions out of everybody. I can't even say it. You didn't even hardly nod, nod your head, did you? I may not be able to give eloquence, but I want to tell you, I want God to touch all of us in such a way that we'll never get over it, dear friend. God wants to use us. He wants to help us in this hour that we're living in when wickedness abounds in our world. He didn't call us in a way to just let us slide by. He called us out of the darkness into the glorious light. And he likes to use you just like you are in your personality. To use you till you're changed to glorify his precious name in the way that he made you. Aren't you glad for that? He's a great God. So Paul wrote, said, oh man, I, I, want you to, I want you to understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. Now, he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It's made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Oh, that God could help us catch that little vision. Amen? In a very special way. Oh, that it would be there. Oh, that it'll catch us. I, I'm so hungry for it. <laughs> oh, I love Jesus, y'all. I, I, I want him to be so known among us that you know him like I do. And, and please, I, I'm not trying to flaunt who I am. I want to tell you, God is so good. He likes to use you and me to glorify his precious name. In Hebrews chapter 9, beginning at verse number 13. Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and of sheep and the ashes of young cows could cleanse people's body from ceremonial impurities. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our conscience from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. 
For by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. Oh, what a Savior. Oh, what a Savior. And there is no secret what God can do. His grace is beyond amazing. His power is beyond anything you and I could ever describe or ever understand. And to him be glory and honor and praise forever and ever. <clears throat> so I wanted to read to you a little bit, if you'll excuse me, out of a book from Max Licato on Isaiah. It really grabbed my heart in a very, very special way. He uh, was talking about <clears throat> seven and one half years before Christ, excuse me, seven and one half centuries before Jesus Christ, Isaiah was Israel's version of a senate chaplain or a court priest. His family were aristocrat, aristocrats. His Hebrew was impeccable, polished, professional, and successful. But the day he saw God, only one response seemed appropriate. He said, me, he said woe is me. I am ruined. I'm undone. What caused such a confession? What stirred such a reply? The answer is found in what you and I have repeated. And the seraphim said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. <clears throat> and Isaiah said, And the foundations of the temple trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, for I'm undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live a, a, among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. What other attributes receive such enforcement when God, when the seraphim said, holy, holy, holy. That's God's attribute, isn't it? God's holy. Nowhere do we ever hear the angels saying, wise, wise, wise. Nor ever do we hear them saying, powerful, powerful, powerful. But we hear him, hear the Lord being re, re, being praised, say it with me, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He's a holy God, a glorious God. God's holiness commands headline attention. The adjective qualifies his name more than all other combined. The first and final song of the Bible magnifies the holiness of God. Having crossed the Red Sea, Moses and the Israelites sang, Who among the gods is like you, O God? Who is like you? Majestic in holiness. Awesome in glory. Amazing in wonders. Working wonders. Revelation, those who had been victorious over the beast sang, who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name, for you alone are holy. So the first song was holy, holy, holy. And the last song, holy, holy, holy. The Hebrew word for holy is goddish, which means cut off or separate or holiness. And it speaks of the otherness of God, his total uniqueness. Everything about God is different from the world he made. Can you all catch that? Everything. He's clear above it. All of it, we were praising him this morning. He doesn't need our praises. He's worthy of all praise. But dear ones, he's higher than all praise. Thank God he's called us to walk with him. 
He doesn't have to have us, but he did. And he wanted to show his love so powerful that he made the price that you and I might know Jesus Christ. Here's a little illustration that Max gave. What are you to a paper airplane? Anybody ever made a paper, air, paper airplane? Mike, did you ever make paper, paper airplanes? I'd always tried my best to see if I could get one to fly a long ways and all those kind of things, you know. What you are to a paper airplane, God is to you. Take a sheet of paper, make one. Contrast yourself with your creation. Dare it race you around the block? With a, with a paper airplane, race you around the block? Who's faster? Invite the airplane to a game of one-on-one -on -one ba basketball. Will you not dominate the court? And well, you should. It has no brain waves, no pulse. It exists only because you formed it and fly only when someone throws it. Multiply the contrast between you and the paper airplane by infinity and you'll begin to catch a glimpse of the disparity between God and you. God. Uh, to what can we compare God? Who in the skies is comparable to the Lord? Who among the sons of the, all, of the mighty is like the Lord? That's from Psalm 89, verse 6. Isaiah 40, 18. To whom then will you liken God? Or what likeness will you compare with him? And even God asked, to whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? And if this question needs an answer, he gives one. Listen to what God says. I alone am God. I am God. And there is no one else like me. Only I can tell you the future before it ever happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. I will call a swift bird of prey from the east and a leader from the distant land who will come and do my biddings. I have said it, and it will happen. I have said it, and I will do it. Oh, I want to tell you all, he's the great God. His thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. His power and wisdom is above our power and wisdom. Consider the universe around us. Unlike the potter who takes something and reshapes it, God takes nothing and creates it. God even created the darkness. I created the light and make the darkness. And John proclared, proclaimed, you created all things and they existed before you created. You created all you pleased. Oh, what a God we serve, dear ones. His power is marvelous. His knowledge is complete. And David said in Psalm 139, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? And God reminds us in Jeremiah, I'm everywhere, both near and far, in heaven and in earth. You can't run from him. You think you may be able to hide your lies or your inconsistency or your meanness. Oh, please don't be mean. <laughs> you may be able to hide your unkindness. Please don't be unkind. Be kind. God knows about it. And dear ones, he wants to forgive you and change your life into glorifying his precious name. And one of the great beauties of walking with him is found in those verses I gave you in the bulletin. You remember? And the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and self-control or discipline. Aren't you glad God can do that in our lives? We serve a God that loves to bring us into that place where we enjoy living 
We're not full of regrets and hating ourselves and hating other people. But he brings us into that place. Why? He's a holy God. He's a glorious God. He's a God to see us through. I love to think about him. Oh, I tell you, God gave that glorious vision to Isaiah. It's about God and his glory. And Isaiah points out, it's not about me. It's about him. He finds humility, not through seeking it, but through seeking him. One glimpse and the prophet claims citizenship among the infected and the diseased, the unclean. A term used to describe those with leprosy. And God's holiness silenced human boasting. And God's mercy makes us holy. Aren't you glad? <laughs> Amen. And one of the seraphims flew, flew from the altar with a coal and a pair of tongs. And he touched Isaiah's lips and he said, And your sin is purged. And your sin is forgiven. It wasn't the coal that forgave Isaiah. It was God. And he wants to bring that forgiveness to you if you don't know him this morning. He wants to change your life entirely in the glorious way of serving and walking with him. He's a great God. He won't fail you. He's there to see you through. And as I was reading that, I uh, turned over and, and read one about Job. Real interesting little thought. Said in, in the book of Job, you recall it started. Remember, have you read the book of Job? If you hadn't, I'd encourage you to. You say, well, it's a little hard. Well, just think about two guys talking back and forth with each other. But it starts out, God said that Job was a perfect person in his generation. Well, don't think of perfect in the perfection that we do today. Think it is complete in God. And Job was complete. And the devil wanted to do everything he can to destroy the Lord, but apparently God had a hedge of thorns around him. And so Job accused God of just protecting Job in a special way. So God said, okay. I'll let you, he said, if you'll take away that hedge of thorns, he'll, cuss you, he'll curse you to your face. Well, God said, okay, I'll let you try. And in one second, y'all, in one moment, Job lost 10 children, seven boys and three girls. He lost his camels. He lost his donkeys. He lost his cattle. He lost everything there was of him in one fell moment. Must have been a tornado that hit the house. They were all together and kind of like a party or a celebration, and it was blown apart. But that was the last thing he found out. My, it seemed awful that he lost all of his stuff. But then to think that they come running and said, you lost your children too. Folks, that would have been hard to take. And what did he do? He sat down and he said, what did he say? Can you remember? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so the devil showed up again and said, yeah, if you'll touch his body, he'll curse you. So God said, okay, you can touch him, but you can't kill him. You know, God's got the power. Remember that? That's in his hand. And so Job, afflicted, Job was afflicted. Maybe by elephantitis when your limbs extend and grow up and they burst open and sores and he sat on, a, on an ash pile and scraped himself with ashes trying to get relief. And then, dear friend, to top it all, here comes three friends. When you got friends like that, you don't need enemies. Amen, Gary? <laughs> Friends like that, you don't need enemies. Now, look, they sat and didn't say one word for seven days. Now, it had to be altogether a different culture then than now. Because I'd, I'd already been saying something to them. Why aren't y'all talking to me? Yeah. And then to top it all off, they accused Job, saying, 
you've covered up some kind of sin in your life. That's why you're suffering. You've been a criminal. You've been something bad somewhere, and it all catch up with you, folks. Don't jump into the way the devil does things these days. Right now, we're standing in America where if I'd accuse you, people will believe it because I said it. We used to say, you're proven innocent until you've proven guilty. You're innocent until you're proven guilty. Didn't we? Isn't that what we used to say? Well, they accused Job. But I think maybe, 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 What would I do if Becky said what, what Job's wife said to him? She said, have you kept your integrity, Job? Have you kept your honesty and your trueness? Have you kept true to God? Why don't you curse God and die? Honey, what would I do if you said that to me? Well, thank God she won't. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But what did he do? He said, lady, you talk like a foolish woman. You don't talk like the one that I know. Amen? For the next 23 chapters, it was back and forth with Job and his friends. Eliab is the last one, the fourth one to speak. And then at the last, just before God spoke, for the last six chapters, it looks like Job took the microphone and grabbed a hold of the pulpit and said, y'all listen to me, I'm going to tell you what I think. And so, Max Licato said, if Job had any kind of fault, he talked too much. And finally, when Job got through, the next verse said, and God said. All those other chapters said, and Job continued, and Job continued, and Job continued. But at that chapter, God said. And God spoke to him. And what did Job say? <laughs> I am not worthy. I cannot answer you anything. So I put my hand over my mouth. Notice the change when God came. He talked a lot, but when God came, he was silent. The word for such a moment is reverence. Pray it with me. Our Father, close your eyes if you want to, or bow your heads, or keep them open, doesn't matter. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Have any of you ever read a book by Thomas a. Kempis called Imitation of God? Has anybody ever, ever read that, Imitation of God? Interesting. Let me read what this, this little illustration. Job covered his mouth. Notice the change. Before he heard God, Job could speak, couldn't speak enough. After he heard God, he couldn't speak at all. Silence was the only proper response. There was a, a time in the life of Tempeth, Thomas Akempis when he too covered his mouth. He had written profusely about the character of God, but one day God confronted him with such holy grace that from that moment on, all Akempis' words to him seemed like straw. He put his pen down and never wrote another line. He put his hand over his mouth. A word for that moment is reverence. Hallowed be thy name. The phrase, listen to this little one, y'all. The phrase is a petition. 
not a proclamation. The praise is a petition, a request. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> a request, not an announcement. Hallowed be your name. Do what it takes to be holy in my life. Take your rightful place on the throne of my heart. Exalt yourself in me. Magnify yourself in me. Glorify yourself. You be the Lord. And I'll be quiet. The word hallowed comes from the word holy. And the word holy means to separate. The, an, <clears throat> the ancestry the ancestry of the term can be traced back to an ancient word that means to cut, to be holy, then is to be cut above the normal, the superior, extraordinary. The Holy One dwells on a different level from the rest of us. What frightens us does not frighten Him. What troubles us does not trouble Him. And the issue of life is, help us to sing. He gives a little thought. He said, I'm, I'm not much of a boat person, but he said, I've been on a bat, bass boat out by myself when a storm on the lake came. He said, when a storm on the lake comes, you want to try to get to the shore. He said, the first thing is you don't look at another boat. You don't look at that boat. You fix your eyes on the shore. You fix your eyes on the light and you keep going to the light. Storms of life come, y'all. But if we'll get our eyes on Jesus, we'll never be the same again. Have you seen him? Has it got to your heart? Well, God wants to see you through. I don't know what the result will be in the end for you. But for Job, when he put his hand over his mouth and he was willing to do what God said, and you remember he spoke to Job's friends, he said, I want you to go and ask Job to pray for you. And if Job will pray for you, I'll forgive. But look, there's a whole bunch involved. Job do you forgive them? They've accused you when you weren't guilty. Do you forgive? If you'll pray, Job, I'll know you've opened your heart wide open to me. And you know that it's not you, but it's God. Have you come to that place? Recently, I mentioned to you that I'd heard Alistair Begg say there's two kinds of people in life. One has said, I can handle that. I'll do that. And the other says, help. I need you, Lord. I need you. That's what God wants to do to help us to be like Jesus. Father, Help us that we'll live to glorify your precious name. Help us to cover our mouths and say, Lord, it's you. Guide us in your pathway of truth. In your righteousness we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, Lonnie, I forgot to prepare you for it, but I think you're always available to come and lead us a song. Amen. I've preached to you this thought because I want you to see God. But I want you to come to that place that if you need him, you cry out, I'm unclean. And I want you to come to that place like Isaiah said, here am I. Send me. So let's sing Rescue the Perishing. So Sean and Faye, let's come on this side over here, okay?
rescue the parish, you know. Hey, we'll just pull together and ask God to help him in very, very special. And Sean, it's my privilege to baptize you. And I put my hand over your mouth and get no. And I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and the God be the Lord. Amen. John, do you have a testimony? Amen. Um, no, not really. <laughs> you, you love Jesus. So. I do love Jesus. Amen. And I believe that. Amen. <laughs> Amen.
I just think that you guys should all be like a follower of Jesus and not like a fan because it makes a big difference. Praise the Lord. Aren't we glad for this? Now, if you haven't been baptized, we want to baptize you, okay? And if you speak to me, we'll leave the water in for next week, too. We left it in all week long so we could get get Sean. And lo and behold, if Faye's mother didn't call, and I already said, Faye wants to be baptized, too. That thrills us. To God be all the glory and the praise for everything. Would you stand with me? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad for God's wonderful grace. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord. Are you there, honey? I, I love, love you, Lord. Lord. And I Thank you.